What's up guys? Week three of the NFL season has been and gone and it's time to jump into some fantasy football and look at the mess that is my teams this week. I went 0-2 this week, so not a great week. Let's go ahead and have a look at how we did around the league though. Awesome, there we go. See, it's that easy chat. Everyone lock in. Burnt the shit out of hand before recording this, so I'm not in the best mood, so we're just going to try and get the shit done. Right. <clears throat> Starting off with my matchup in the Ghoulie 12 League, which is the um, the online friends league. Um, we we had a, a, a stinker. Oh no, we won in the end. Wait, what the fuck? What happened? What happened? No, this is last week. No, it's week one. I'm looking at the wrong fucking week. I'm high. There we go. Yeah, I knew we'd had a stinker. There we go. Um... Yeah, we had a stinker, as I was saying. Um, just no one did anything. 95 points. 125 points is a pretty good score, but 95 just is not going to get it done. CJ Stroud, 9.8. Najee Harris, the best of the bunch other than my defense with 13.6. He's just never, ever going to get it done. Bijan Robinson finally finds the end zone, but yardage just doesn't exist. Um, Mike Evans, probably one of his worst career games. Uh, Nico Collins, again, not bad. Like You can accept 12.6 from your number two wide receiver if your number one wide receiver does better than that. Gasicki, finally, out of all of the weeks, I had a tight end not completely stink up the gaff. Um, I picked up Pierce because he'd been doing okay. I know he had a, a pop-off week one week, but he, did, he was doing okay still, um, and I needed someone. Didn't work out. Six points for Moody. Is what it is. It's not too bad for a kicker. Um, Packers defense, huge, huge from them. 20 on points without them, this would have been a lot more embarrassing. Um, but I didn't particularly leave anything on the bench. I did leave stuff on the bench um, because when everyone scores this poorly, of course you've left stuff on the bench. But I could have put Thielen in for Evans for an extra 10 points. I could have put Judy in for... Pierce for an extra three points, but that's what, an extra 13 points? Um, and Aaron Rodgers over Stroud was a big one, 20. So I think if I put my perfect lineup out, I maybe tie or very slightly lose. So, like, entire squad, horrific this week. Moving on to... Let me, let me do that again. Josh also got blown out, fortunately. Um, 55 points to mix 108 pitiful from josh let's see where i went wrong maybe he's back on fraud watch who knows Derek carr after two stunning weeks only eight points each etn 12.5 and that was his top scoring player oof um a chan uncharacteristically low 8.8 .8. that miami offense really just could not get going without um tour um same story here with tyree kill only seven points um, Jameer, Jamal, Jameson Williams, um, 1.2, seven receiving yards, negative seven rushing yards. Really hate to see that. McBride's 5.5 isn't bad from your tight end, but when everyone else is doing not much better, it's just not going to cut the cake. Brian Robinson, solid as ever. 10 points from your flex, you'd be pretty happy with. Again, if everyone else had done their job. Dicker the kicker doing his job. Um, Raiders defense costing points big time. I don't think anyone thought the Raiders were a dangerous bet this week defensively, but Andy Dalton is that dude. And of course, Dak Prescott, 30 points on his bench. Oof. Zach Moss, 20 points on his bench. Oof. Cam Akers, 9.9 .9 points on his bench. Oof. I'm pretty sure they could have all started. Um... I oh, know you'd probably leave Robinson in for um, Acres, but you bring on Smith and Jeeba for Williams. Um, I still don't think that would have been enough, but it would have got him a lot, a lot closer to not embarrassing. Um, Mick had a fucking stellar performance, like hundred points is exactly where you want to be. Um, and with Foreman only getting point five in in that as well, he's got to be pretty happy with where his team is. Other than that, the big concern has got to be this. There was nothing on his bench. Um, so you do have to kind of wonder 
Nick Chubb, Mostert and Joku all a bit banged up. Edwards not being the main back. Does he need to do something to strengthen his bench a little bit? Because this is good. This is a really good starting lineup. Zaka, Diggs, Wilson, Adams, Jameer Gibbs. But if 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 they all have a, even a dip week at the same time, like he's only just scraped 110 points and he has nothing on his bench. That is um, definitely a, a a point of concern going forward for him, I'd expect. Next up, we got Luke versus other Josh. Luke with another high-scoring week, 139 points. Let's see where it all went right and wrong. Jalen Hurts, only 10 points. Oof. But beaten by Jared Goff with 15. Low-scoring quarterbacks, again. Quarterbacks all should have gone a lot later in everyone's drafts, I feel. Kareem Williams, 31 points, and that still wasn't enough to get it done. 127 points. He beat basically everyone else in the league this week. Um, so he's got to feel a bit hard done by. Brees Hall, 18 points. Godwin, 17 points. Shakira, Shakira? Yeah, fuck it, Shakira, 19 points. Dalton Schultz, 3 points. Can you take that from tight end? Singletree, 18 points. That is insanity. None of his running backs or wide receivers have scored less than 17.3. Craziness. Then nine points from your kickers isn't to be sniffed at. Cowboys defense once again costing people points. Um, and I mean, technically there was points left on his bench. He could have got an extra 2.7 points. Um, it wouldn't have changed the outcome. But that is a wide receiver call you're happy to see this week. Holy hell, they've done well. That would be a really good team for the rest of the year as well because their names aren't outrageously surprising with their performance, so he'll be happy with that. But let's see what took him down. Goff, 15 points, gives him a little leg up there. Running back duo combining for 50 points to just match that and keep that five-point lead. Insanely, 36 points from your two wide receivers put you further behind in this matchup as another 50-point pairing from the wide receivers in Amon Ra and Rasheed Rice is insanity. Brock Bowers, the rookie tight end, absolutely frying. Tyler Lockett with a nice, comfortable 10 points there to just help out. And his defense didn't cost him points. Just looking at this without getting too into it, I wouldn't have said that he's won by 12 points there. I would have said it was probably two or three points in it. But there you go. Shows what I know. Probably why I lost both my games this week. Next up, we've got Cameron, who is our um, resident AFK player in this league this year against Wag. Cam got bodied. Um, Walker still out for the Seahawks. Richardson, really poor game. White, poor. Jefferson, good. Reed, okay. Nothing from Ingram, who's still out hurt. Drake London had a good game. Hopkins, really poor. Oh, my God. Um... And this is a field goal as well. You just hate to see it. Um, Bears defense helped out a little bit. I mean, it's, it's poor. It's, it's, what, else, what else can you say? It, it was poor. 25 points of Charbonnet sat on his bench. Like, this was probably a winnable game. If D Hop had started and he just, you know, started a running back, does he have another running back? Yeah, Charbonnet. So that's a 25 point swing right there. And all of a sudden, it's a lot closer for you. He's paying any attention. He'd probably be able to um, get something done here. But um, wasn't enough. Wag with 105 points. Kyler Murray, 14, which seems to be good for quarterbacks this year. Um, Montgomery, 21. Mason, characteristically low 10 points now that people are scheming for him. Solid enough wide receiver duo, especially when Kincaid comes in with 13 points. You kind of you find yourself balancing out there because that's just a straight 13-point win over his tight end. Flex is a little low compared to Drake London, but it's made up for in other places. Brandon Aubrey, fucking one of the best legs in the league right now. We've already done you, Joshua, officially on Fraud Watch, pal. Um, Aubrey absolutely balling out with 11 points as a kicker and then, again, five points for the Chiefs defence, keeping it nice and close. But, yeah, Cam got his back blown out, kind of like Josh. Next up, we got Tony and Oscar. Oscar falls to one and two. And I've got to feel bad for him because I feel like every time we've looked at him, he scored well over 100 points or at least over 100 points. Um, and he's got a work, uh, same record as me. You hate to see it. Um, Tony getting his first win of the season, though. He will be excited, I'm sure. Lamar Jackson, balling out. 
Yeah, you're not wrong, Josh. You are not wrong. Um, Lamar Jackson balling out again. Crazy. Um, Derek Henry doing what Derek Henry can do. Derek Henry is going to... Derek Henry is a real risk-reward player in um, fantasy football this year because he is going to have multiple games like this. I'm telling you that now. Um, but with his lower usage, you can't really rely on him week in, week out. He might be a flex god. You just stick him in your flex and hope the rest of your guys can make it work. Uh, McGoughlin, eight points in a in a Denver win over Tampa Bay, which I don't think anyone saw coming. Waddle, again, suffering from my, the Miami situation. Devonta Smith is not looking great, potentially headed to IR, I heard, or just knocked out of the fucking game he got murdered. Still managed 15 points per going out. Ferguson, 15 points from your tight end, you're never going to sniff at. Poor in the flex. Butker, who is a scumbag of a human being, with 12 points at kicker, you are laughing. Cardinals defense, five points. Very happy with that. Um, but good management. N nothing left on the bench. Um, what, there's, I think there's literally no extra points to be earned here. I don't know, you, you could earn some points at flex by having Thomas in. Um, and yeah, there's maybe four points you could have made up here um, in reality. So that is numbers that he'll be pretty happy with and good decision making. Um, and Oscar was absolutely nowhere near winning this game. He's probably amazed he broke 100 points. Bearing in mind, Josh Allen's Monday Night Football, 30 points. Um, Kamara, again, characteristically low with only 15 points. Especially after such an insane week last week. Brown, 9. Higgins, 7. Um, you're going to feel bad stacking up the um, Cincinnati defensive room this season with how they started um, obviously last night there was no punted drives i believe i've read but clearly these two players didn't benefit from that too much cd lamb poor game and a fumble laporte went out i think in the third quarter hurt and didn't get much usage zay flowers okay but not great um tyler bass and another 11 point kicking performance with a pat missed so he could have tied um but because there and the Steelers defense came in and helped out a bit, but it couldn't make up the difference. This this dip of five guys in a row, not even breaking 10 points, really, really cost him. If all of them even get up to 10 points, he wins by a mile. An extra 10 points there, four there, 14, another, yeah. Or maybe not a mile, but he's close. But that's the difference maker right there. Then who's this to close it out? We got Joss and Ian. Ian's somehow on a two-win streak, and Joss is going to be fuming that he's lost on 125 points. But that's why the cookie crumbles. Um, Pat Mahomes, 16 points. Chuba Hubbard, 27. That's a huge performance. Teddy Spears with 10. Kirk with 15. Metcalf, 20. 35 points from your receiving core you'd be pretty happy with. Um, Kelsey finally showed up a little bit with 7 points. Um, Johnson, 26 points at your flex. You are laughing. Um, Justin Tucker, a missed field goal, which is a, a rare occurrence, but still scored four points. Bucks defense only cropping up with two points. Um, and then on the flip side, Josh Jacobs has really hurt him here. You'd, you'd have been hoping that Josh Jacobs would have um, been pushing towards 100 dollars like he was last week, and that would have won him the game, but not to be. Malik Neighbors and MJH. The ballsy double wide receiver, uh, rookie wide receiver duo is paying dividends. He just needs to find the parts to put around them. Nothing from uh, Shahid in your flex has got to be mind blowing. Only one point from your kicker is always rough. Brown's defense did okay. Um, how many points did he leave on the bench? He must have left something. More with 15 points at flex would have won in the game comfortably. Um, Quinton Johnson at flex would have won in the game the Bills defence um, there was a lot of decisions made that could have won him this game but I don't think he made any horrific decisions I think the Browns defence against the Giants was better than the Bills Rashid, uh, Shahid has caught a big touchdown every week so far so I kind of get falling into that trap uh, I'm surprised DJ Moore had that many points in the end um, and Quinton Johnson, I don't blame you for not expecting him to catch anything just because he showed up well last week. 
But that is it in the um, in the Gooley 12 League. I drop well out of playoff contention and I need to do some business if I want to um, stay competitive later on in the season for sure. Ba 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 booey. There we go. Um, I will let the peeps know. I mean, I don't know if Josh is still in chat, but I'll let the peeps know that you're um interested in potentially joining the league next year, James. Um, how fuck did I? Oh, game time is what I want. No, let me back in. See now, this all just stuff has to be cut out, guys. This is stuff you don't get to see in the, in the YouTube cut. Right. Um, week three, not week four. Just depressing when you lose both your games, man. And now we're over in the Andy Dalton fan club, who is, of course, very excited this week for Andy Dalton coming back to the, the league. He's back. Guess who's back? The Red Rocket. Kind of showing that quarterback play, on average, might have gone down because he walked back into the league and he looked kind of the best I've ever seen him. So maybe... Mahomes isn't that good. Maybe he's a fraud who's skating by on quarterback playing the league being abysmal at the minute. Thoughts? Let me know what you think down in the comments. Um, but complete reverse from week one where I was 2-0 and across the leagues. I'm 0-2 this week. Everything that could go wrong did go wrong. Um, I didn't even break 100 points. You're okay with this at wide receiver if you're not up against 41 points over here. The real kick in the nuts is the fact that I lost someone who didn't have a tight end. But let's let's talk about this here. Because no tight end and Stevenson on Thursday Night Football, I thought I was quids in here. Baker Mayfield's been cooking. Dobbins has been the main back and he's had back-to-back 100-yard -back games. Robinson has been getting lots of yards on his due a touchdown. Godwin's been doing really well, and I've got the double dip. And they're, they're against Denver. Denver are dog shit. Marvin Harrison's finally getting the ball. Hunter Henry had a bit of a poor week. Josh Jacobs, he rushed for 150 yards last week. Money. Um, Houston are a good offense, but Minnesota are good. So lots of field goal opportunities. Packer defense against Tennessee was the only thing I got right here. The Packers defense against Tennessee was the only thing I got right here. Everything else was horseshit. Um... CJ Stroud, 11 points, would have been better. Um, Najee Harris over Josh Jacobs would have been better. All Dobbins would have been better. Um, Worthy, I don't think, would have actually been better. Um, blah, 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 blah. Pierce, I brought in. But yeah, it was just, I just had nothing. I had nothing. Like, there's not even that many points on my bench. But I still could have had more points out there. Could have had an extra two and a half points there, an extra two points there, an extra five points there. It wouldn't have won me the game. I couldn't have won this game, but my God, everything should have been fine, and it just wasn't. This this Tampa Bay Denver game really fucked me. In my head, I was scheming up some vile situation where Baker and Godwin link up for two tuddies, and I mean, if you just double their score, that's another twenty one points. I'm all of a sudden a lot fucking closer. But on the flip side over here, just everything went right for him. Kyron Williams against the San Francisco run defense managed 36 points. Jalen Hurts, who was on like five points, just all of a sudden just kept on creeping up, just slinging the ball. Jamar Chase finally had a good week. Alan Kamara, another good week. The Ravens defense, 10 points is solid. I right, just everything went wrong for me. I hate it here. And he left no points on the bench. He made all the right decisions, I'm pretty sure. Um... I mean, Zach Moss might have been an upgrade. Yeah, uh, so any other running back would have been upgrade over Stevenson from to really drive drive the nail home. But Stevenson's had a great year so far, so I don't think that was a bad decision on the face to um, keep him in over Zach Moss. But yeah, everything went wrong. You hate to see it. We dropped to 2-1, first loss of the season. Um, we've got some plans. We've got some feelers out, but it is not the one. Next up. Cash. Cash is annoying because he does auto draft, but after he auto drafts, he does pay attention. He makes waiver changes. He updates his Ross star. He, he kind of cooks. And then on the flip side, like you've got Ryan, who pays it literally zero attention. So, I mean, look at this. Dak, 33. Saquon, 42. Mason, 13. Metcalf, 22. 
insanity. But let's be completely clear here. His running back one and quarterback beat that entire team by 20 points. That's before he adds anything else. No, there's not a whole lot else here. But 18 points from the Saints defense. Do you know what I mean? Insanity. Just large scoring players here went nuts. But then over here you got Jordan Love who wasn't playing. Connor had a really poor week. Achan, poor week. Wilson, finally getting going, but not quite as strong. Nakua on IR. Mark Andrews, I believe suited up, but just didn't get targeted. Smith got knocked the fuck out in the second or third quarter, whatever it was. Hopkins, only one point. The Bills' defense tried really hard. The Bills' defense was like, we are going to try and make this less embarrassing. We're going to get you within 100 points. Um... I don't think, I mean, 34, but he actually left points on the bench, would you believe? 33 points from Dak Prescott was worse than Jaden Daniels' 34 points. Insanely, the position he left points on the bench for is quarterback. He could have had an extra six points of wide receiver. Yeah, absolute insane amount of points. But congratulations, James. Shook down Skip, who was also... Um, do we know going into the week? Oh, we've gone to a completely wrong game here. James versus James. Um, and James won. You'd love to see it. Finally, all coming together for you a little bit here, James. It was looking a little bit shaky early on. Um, Joe Burrow did you some did you some good last night. Some some serious good. Um, especially with the season he was having. I can't imagine you thought you were gonna win this one. Um, but yeah, Joe Burrow 33, Jones 28 points, finally settling in at Minnesota and really, really looking good. Four 10 points in a lot in just a poor Giants Cleveland game. I feel like every time they cut to that, it was just punting. Um, Amon Ra finally getting going. Smith and Jeeba, a little bit of a low scoring game, but he's still young, it'll kick in. Dalton Kincaid, 10 points. You love that from your wide receiver, especially the way we've got our league set up. 13 points from Robinson at Flex, really good. Um, he might be looking for a promotion into that running back two slot. Show a bit of respect. Seven points from your kicker you love to see. Uh, Brown's defense, solid enough job. Did you leave any points on the bench? Um, a dues. Yeah, dues could have come in for Smith for an extra 15 points, um, which probably would have had you feeling a lot more confident with um, Joe Burrow unless always oh, pulled out a miracle there. Yeah, not, not too shabby. Um, could... Skip have done anything more to thwarted you. I'm seeing 37 points worth wide receivers on his bench, and I'm only seeing 20 points worth wide receivers on the field. So I'm going to go out and say, yes, he could have. So sucks to sucks to be him. Were these outraged decisions? Justin Jefferson's a must start. You never, ever go drop him. Brandon Ayuk has had a slow start, so maybe you would drop him, but... Yeah, I'd probably been starting with Shee Rice over Brandon Ayuk this week. Um, but that 15 points would have been enough to make the difference. So maybe that's the one bad decision from him there. But I don't think it's an egregious one. Anchor with her first win of the season. Always an early season favourite is Anchor. But um, couldn't, couldn't get going until week three. Let's see why. Uh, Josh Allen, 36 points. Huge points. Um, I believe the game was already won before he played, but huge points nonetheless. Brees Hall, 18 points. Jameer Gibbs, 20 points. Diggs, 11. Alave, 15. Bowers with 5. Little bit poor at flex, but you can live with that. Sticking with her Cowboys is going to punish her. I don't know how after last week and going up against Baltimore, you thought that was the defence to keep running, but it is what it is. Um, no points really left on the bench. Eckler with 15. Could have gone in at flex. Um, could have gone in at flex but other than that not really much more you could do Grazer however left 25 points with Aaron Rodgers and 30 points with Hubbard on the bench and bearing in mind he didn't start a running back probably would have helped as, as, as the um, commander in chief you'd expect Fraser to check his lineup, but apparently he's not doing that anymore um and it's punishing him already. Is that him? 0-3. Oh, now we'll do win week one. He managed to win week one. Tom with 139 points. Oh my good gravy. What happened here? Derek Henry's 37 points happened here. 
Mario Cooper 21, Malik Neighbors 21. So, oh my goodness. At least I wasn't the only person who lost to someone missing a player this week. Um, yeah, just this here, running back, wide receiver, wide receiver, tight end, real, been real nasty work here. Six points, four points, four, especially with Adams and Lamb and Pollard, who've been pretty good so far this year. Um, no, not Goddard and Purdy on the bench. Oh, to be fair, Purdy would have been downgrade still. But Goddard with 19 points sat on his bench. That is going to sting. Sting major style. Um, he could have brought Spears on for some extra points over Pollard as well. And Thomas also would have been upgraded over both his wide receivers in hindsight. I don't think he left enough. I don't think he needs to really. I don't think he's made any outrageous calls here. I don't. I don't think like I'm looking at any of these decisions, shaking my head, going, "That was a boneheaded move." But when you see all them points sat on your bench afterwards, it just hurts. Meanwhile, on the flip side, 14 points left on the bench. Granted, out, 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 got hurt. Zay Flowers. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean. Derek Henry popped off 37 points is enough to swing most games, let alone Amari Cooper finally having a good game for the Browns and Malik Neighbors. Malik Neighbors is an early shot candidate for um, Offensive Rookie of the Year. Um, guy has started hot. But that is it from Fantasy Football this week. Let me know what you thought of my performance down below. Tell me that Josh is a fraud in the comments. Tell me that James is a very, very lucky boy. And I'll see you in a bit. Peace.